Hello, today we're going to talk about the best way to do a two-part solution to make sure that your alkalinity is stable. Hello and welcome back uh, everyone to Amra Azul TV. Today's topic is going to be about alkalinity and how to make sure that alkalinity is stable. So there is a saying uh, uh, for SPS keepers at least that uh, SPS means stability promotes success. And the idea here is that keep, uh, keeping stable parameters is going to enhance your success at, keep finicky, at keeping finicky corals like Acropora. And often when we talk about stability, I mean, you do want stability over multiple parameters like salinity, temperature, uh, and obviously uh, your alkalinity, uh, calcium, and magnesium. But out of the three uh, main kind of parameters, uh, alkalinity is often uh, the one that uh, most uh, reef keepers obsess about because it does change often. And back in the day before I actually uh, uh, had uh, a trident to uh, measure alkalinity at several times during the day, I would typically measure my alkalinity once a week uh, uh, on the weekend and I would set my dose based on that level. And here's, here's a situation where having the trident has really opened kind of my eyes to the amount of variation that you get in alkalinity over time just throughout the day. So what I'm showing you here is actually the graph. I typically measure alkalinity four times a day. Uh, and here's a graph of my alkalinity over a week period. And you see that it actually varies a lot. Uh, and you, you see these little peaks here where the, typically at the end of my, when lights go off in my tank, that's around uh, 6 p.m., uh, alkalinity starts kind of increasing, 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 and it reaches a peak uh, where essentially the lights are about to go on. So what's happening here is that lights off alkalinity increases, and as soon as the lights come on in the morning, Alkalinity goes down really quickly uh, uh, to uh, it declines all the way until lights are off again and alkalinity goes up when lights are off, it goes down when the lights are on and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why this is happening in, in a second, but I think uh, if you look at this graph, you see that there's a, quite a substantial variation uh, just between like lights on and lights off. We're talking about on average uh, 0.4 to 0.3 dKH change. So you see here it starts 8.1 and then it peaks at 8.4 and it goes back to 8.1. Right, that's a big change. That's almost a half a, a degree of alkalinity. Uh, so one important thing uh, for you to note here is when you're testing alkalinity, now that you know that alkalinity kind of cycles day to day like this, uh, it's really important to make your testing consistent. So if you're gonna test once a day or once a week, try to always test at the same time to, uh, to uh, not confound your readings by this day-to-day -day effect. So if you're gonna test uh, at, uh, at 6 p.m., always test at 6 p.m. If you're testing at uh, uh, noon, then always test at noon. Uh, you, you could see how you could run into issues. Let's say one day you came and tested at six in the morning and you got an alkalinity of 8.4, and that's that's great that's the level that you want and then in the next day you test at uh well not midnight that would be a little bit crazy uh but you test at uh, let's say uh, 6 p.m and your alkalinity is going to be 8.18 and you're going to make a lot of changes thinking that your alkalinity dropped from 8.41 to 8.18 but in fact if you had tested at the same time 6 p.m in the next day then you would have noticed that the alkalinity have only marginally declined so just uh, an important tip for you that if you're testing alkalinity and any other parameter for that matter, try to always test it at the same time. So why is alkalinity changing over time like this? Why does it increase when your lights are off and decrease when your lights are on? So I prepared a little cartoon to kind of uh, help you visualize what's happening. So when the lights are on, your uh, corals are uh, photosynth uh, photosynthesizing and that increases pH and uh, uh, we believe that pH increases is uh, uh, related to alkalinity consumption. So uh, during the lights are on, your tank is consuming alkalinity at a much higher rate. 
then when the lights turn off, the, photosynth the corals are no longer photosynthesizing, pH decreases, and alkalinity consumption declines. So you could imagine the bottom here, uh, this represents the demand for alkalinity or al alkalinity consumption uh, in your tank. And it would be higher when the lights are on and lower when the lights are off. Now, if you are like most people and, and like me, uh, continuously dose alkalinity, so you're essentially dosing alkalinity, uh, uh, dosing the same amount every hour, uh, then your uh, the alk supply that is going into the tank remains consistent, but the demand for alk changes during the day. So you could imagine that these two processes, the supply and demand, are controlling the actual the levels of alkalinity that you measure at any given time. So when your lights are off, demand is low, but supply is high. So your uh, DKH, your alkalinity increases. When your lights go on, then uh, the demand increases and the supply is relatively lower. So your alkalinity decreases. And effectively, this cycle kind of continues and continues and, and it's perpetuated by the fact that alkalinity chain, alkalinity demands or alkalinity consumptions change over time, depending on your light cycle. But if you're continuously dosing, then your supply is always the same. And that leads to this uh, boom and bust cycles. So in theory, having something like this, where if you're able to change your supply, your alk supply, how much you dose in the tank, uh, depending on whether you have lights on or lights off, then you could, in theory, match the supply to the demand. So in theory, if you dose less when the lights are off, when the demand is low, and you dose more when the lights are on where the demand is highest, then you can potentially improve the stability of uh, alkalinity in your tank. So I actually set out to do this uh, little experiment. Uh, so for the past uh, 20 days or so, I've been doing an experiment with my tank. The first uh, 11 days, I did business as usual, which is my typical dosing. Uh, and uh, if you're if you want to know what my typical dosing is, I, I dose uh, two part ESV. The alkalinity component is uh, 35 mils per day, and typically this is kind of continuously delivered to the tank using my Apex dose. So uh, approximately that's 1.45 mil per hour. And so I I I ran. Uh, this is the kind of business as usual. I ran this and I kept track of my daily ALK swing. So I could measure the highest ALK swing and the minimum, uh, sorry, the highest measurement, the lowest measurement. And I, I kept track of that for these 11 days. And then after the 11 days were over, I switched my dosing to dose more during the day and less at night. So I took my, I, sell, I still kept that 35 mil per day constant, what I changed is when this 35 mils per day were gonna be delivered to my tank. And based on some uh, calculations that I'm gonna show you where I got this number, uh, I actually dose 75, 70 uh, percent of this 35 mil per day uh, during lights are on, uh, when my lights were on, and then the other 30 percent of the 35 mils were dosed when the lights were off. And I, just like uh, what I did in the first 11 days, I kept track of my daily ALK swings. And so what I'm gonna show you now is the results of my little experiment. And uh, to note, if, if you do have a trident there, there and you're using the trident to control your uh, dose, that Apex actually has a little button that you could click and it does this uh, or something very similar to uh, this process of dosing more in the day than at night. Uh, and uh, it actually uh, uses your light schedule to figure out when your lights are on and off. Uh, but for my test, I just did it manually to kind of control things. So this is what the data looks like. What you're looking at as, uh, is the daily ALK swing. So this is the maximum versus the minimum ALK, uh, maximum uh, during night and minimum during day. And uh, the black points here are the, the first 11 days where I had consistent dosing, 35 mils continuously de delivered to my tank regardless of uh, of whether it was uh, in the day or at night. So that's 35 minute, uh, 35 mils over the whole day. And you could see that, you know, there is some variation in the out screens, but on average it's about uh, 0.25 DKH. Then the red point here is when I switched into dosing more during the day and less at night. So 70% of the 35 mils per day is going uh, during lights on and 30% of the 35 mils is going during lights off. 
And you could see right away very clearly that uh, the dosing more during the day substantially reduced my outswings. So the average was less than 0.1 dKH. Uh, another way to visualize this, this is a box plot of uh, the average. This is uh, 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 the, the blue, the black line here is the average uh, uh, daily outswing for consistent dosing. Uh, and this is showing the 95% confidence intervals. And this is the average for uh, dosing uh, just 70% during the day and 30% during at night. And I did some uh, it's kind of very simple statistics and ANOVA on this. Uh, here is the code. If you if you use R and you want to run this data set, I'm happy to give you the actual data. But effectively, like this difference between elk swing in uh, when I dose consistently or dose more during the day is highly uh, significant. So uh, th that means that changing the, the way you dose has a, a significant, statistically significant effect on your daily elk swing. So uh, dosing more during the day will reduce your alkalinity swings. And so I, th I think this is, uh, I think for people that have uh, tanks that uh, rely on two-part dosing, I think that's something that you might uh, seriously consider is doing more dosing during the day than at night. And uh, obviously, you know, the, uh, how important this is for your tank depends on how much alk consumption is. Uh, it depends on uh, how, lo uh, you know, the volume of your tank. Obviously, I, I don't have a very large tank. Mine is a, a 55 gallon display and 10 gallon uh, uh, sump. So, you know, the elk swings are going to be more pronounced in a smaller tank than a larger tank. But regardless, in, in theory, uh, the cycles of uh, boom and bust for alkalinity uh, uh, will occur in any tank. And, and as such, you would expect this dosing more during the day should be beneficial in, in any tank in terms of reducing your elk swings. And uh, in terms of like how to figure out how to split your dose between day and night. And so I, I have a very kind of simple method for this. Uh, so here is a rough guide. So first, uh, look at your light schedule and find out the proportion uh, that, uh, of time that your tank spends with lights off. So uh, you see my lights like come on at seven and they turn off at, uh, what is that, nine. But you could see that for the, the period that where the tank is uh, essentially getting the most light and where most photosynthesis is happening is this plateau here where the lights are out around 65%. And this is approximately eight hours. Uh, that is to say that, uh, you know, one third of the time, one third during the day, the lights are on at peak hours and two thirds of the day, the lights are essentially effectively off. And so uh, the first step is to fig figure out this proportion uh, now I got some spelling mistakes here. Okay, so the second step is you want to essentially take the proportion of your day that the, that the lights are off and you multiply that by the amount that you typically dose alkalinity and that gives you the amount of uh, vo the volume of uh, two-part solution that you need to dose during the day. So uh, my, uh, my tank spends 16 out of 24 hours, that's two thirds with the lights off and I typically dose 35 mils. So I multiply this 35 mils by uh, two thirds or 66.6% .6 and I get 23.3 mils. So that's the part, that's the amount that uh, you would start dosing during the day. And the rest of it, the rest of the 35 mils after you take 23.3 is 11.67. Uh, that's the part that you dose at night. So for me, uh, based on my kind of calculations and my photo period, I, I started with uh, dosing 23.33 mils uh, during the eight hours of peak time. That's approximately like three mils per hour for the eight hours. And then the remaining, uh, you split it, uh, so it's 11.67, uh, and you split it in two equal parts, right? And one here and one there, so it's 5.8 for eight hours and 5.8 for eight hours, or approximately 0.7 mils per hour uh, during uh, your light uh, off cycles. So that's, this is, I think this will give, just give you a rough guide in terms of deciding how much you wanna dose in a day. Uh, obviously, uh, if, if you're gonna try this, uh, first, I, I strongly suggest that you actually do the testing uh, 
before lights come on and after lights come off and just to kind of make sure that your alkalinity is kind of uh, is cycling and to get a sense of the magnitude of the cycles and if you wanted to do this then uh, you could either uh, just go for this uh, target uh, or or you could uh, just start slowly, gradually moving some portions of the dosing that you do at night and putting that volume uh, into the amount that you're going to dose in the daytime. All right, guys, uh, that's uh, that's it. Uh, I think this I think this little tip might uh, be really interesting in terms of improving alkalinity and st the stability of alkalinity in your system. Uh, obviously, you know. Is, is, is this going to make uh, a difference in terms of how well your corals grow or color up? Uh, I, I don't really know. I mean, uh, I've been dosing, con consistent dosing and having these swings in alkalinity for uh, essentially most of the life of the tank. And I still was able to get growth and, and color on my Acropora. So, you know, obviously I don't think changing dosing into dosing more in the day is going to be like super essential, but you know, we could argue that if, if the argument is that the more stability that you have, the better your system will be, the healthier it is for the corals. And then, then from that from that point of view, then it does make sense to try to do uh, anything that you can to reduce this variation of alkalinity over time. And and dosing more in a day, I think, is an important is a useful tool to kind of uh, keep the fluctuations or the daily outswings to a minimum. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for watching and see you around.